Okay, so where we left off as we were talking about what's a force, we said it was a push or a pull on an object that may cause a change in motion. And while that video was uploading, I continued to push on the desk. You'll have to take my word for it, but the desk didn't move. Okay, so there were two types or two categories of forces, contact and non-contact. Contact is where the object that's applying the force is in direct contact with the object experiencing it. Non-contact forces are objects uh, are forces that are uh, um, exerted over a distance where the objects do not need to be touching or in contact. A couple of other things about forces. One is that it is a vector. Its direction matters, right? If I tell you, uh, two of you to push on a box, both with 100 newtons, and I don't tell you the direction, and so one of you pushes one way and the other one of you pushes the other way, you're not going to be very successful in moving the box. Okay, so the direction of the forces matter. Um, and we'll talk about adding them up again in a minute. But the other piece that I just said, and I don't know if you heard it, is what is force measured in? Forces are measured in the unit known as a Newton, named after Sir Isaac Newton, okay? It's a capital N, okay? And Isaac Newton did a ton of work on forces, not just gravity, the force of gravity, but a whole bunch of other things too. All right, um, with forces. And next week, we'll after the test and stuff, we'll look at um, Newton's three laws. But we get ahead. First, um, I don't know if, I, I guess I should probably define statics again. We talked about it back when and we were saying, let's start mechanics. So it's the area of mechanics that studies the relation of forces on objects at rest. The area of mechanics that studies the relationship between forces on objects at rest. The area of mechanics that studies the relationship of forces on objects at rest, static, stationary at rest. Okay? If one object has more than uh, one force acting on it at a time, then we could add the forces together and get a resultant, just like we could add the displacements together and get a resultant when we were doing displacements and velocities. When more than one force is acting on an object, they're called concurrent forces. They are acting concurrently, which means they're acting at the same time. Okay, so concurrent forces are two or more forces acting on the same object at the same time. Two or more forces acting on the same object at the same time. Did you write that down? Two or more forces acting on the same object at the same time. And so we can add those concurrent forces together to get the resultant or the net force. Okay, so the resultant force, just like the resultant displacement, the resultant velocity, the resultant force is often called the net force, kind of like your net pay, it's the total. Okay, um, and remember, when we're adding forces together, they're vectors, so it's like adding any other vectors, okay? If you remember way back to when we started, there were four cases for adding vectors. Case number one was when they were going in the same direction, and the rule was just add them and keep the direction. Right, and so if this is 100 newtons east, and this is 100 newtons east, then your net force, which we often write as F net, or your resultant force would be 200 newtons east. So case one, if you remember, and you do have these in your notes, is when they're acting in the same direction. 
Case two, and remember we said these were kind of common sense. Case two is if they're acting in opposite directions. So let's make this one this time 200 newtons east. And let's make this one maybe 300 newtons west, just to spice it up a little. So the rule in this case, remember, you subtract them and keep the direction of the larger. So subtract and keep direction of larger. So when we subtract, we get 100 newtons. The larger one is west, so our net force, our total force, our resultant, will be 100 newtons west. And then if you remember the third case, the third case was when they were at right angles to each other. So now my 200 newtons is going east is going this way. Oh, actually, let me make this one 300. Newtons east is going this way. And maybe I have a 400 newton force going north. And just like any other vectors, we can't add these two together because they're not head to tail. So we need to pick up our 400 newton one and slide it over here. Okay, and you're allowed to do that as long as you don't change the direction. So this is my new 400 newtons north. And so now my resultant always starts where the first one started, always ends where the last one ends. So the rules don't change even though we're talking about forces now. And to find it, you would do Pythagorean theorem. 300 squared, which is 9 with four zeros. 400 squared, which is 16 with four zeros. Add them together, 25 with four zeros. Take the square root. My F net here would be 500 newtons. But we need a direction because it's a force. So then you would have to find this angle. So you would do tan theta is equal to 400 newtons over 300 newtons. And you would get a theta of 53.13 degrees. And so then you would go square bracket. Which way was I going first? East, 53.13 degrees. Which way did I turn? North. Okay, so remember that case. So these are the different cases of adding forces together. And then the last case was if they were at any other angle other than 0, 180, and 90. So maybe I have a box here. So I have my 300 newtons here, and this uh, going east. And this time my 400 newtons is going up at an angle. Okay, and so maybe this angle is 30 degrees. So I need to again move it so it's head to tail. So this is my 400 newtons, and this angle is 30 degrees. And if you remember what we did here, to find it, the resultant still always starts where the first one started, ends where the last one ended. So what we would do here would be find the components of this. So we would find this Fx and we would find this Fy by doing trig, right? Fx is the adjacent side, which would be cosine. So cos theta would be F x over 400 newtons so fx would be 400 newtons cos theta you would get a, va a cos of what was it 30 and then you would get a value you would do the same but with sine for fy do you remember us doing these with distances so fy would be 400 newtons sine of 30 this one i can do in my head it will be 200 newtons. And then once you do that, once you find the components, it's like the original hypotenuse is no longer here. And so what you're left with is a right angle triangle where you'd add these two up in the bottom, and now it's really just case three again. You would square this, square this, and get that back. Okay? So we're going to be finding, this is called what we just did here, with this 400 newtons, I'll draw it back in now that I took it out, um, is it's called finding its components, finding its legs or its components. And so we'll be doing a, a fair bit of that. There's one other word I need to talk about. It's called the equilibrium, and we're going to run out of time.